Well, when it comes to the housing market, Toronto perhaps one of the tightest markets out there. It's a big conversation in the mayoral debates, but it seems to come up everywhere. A persistent lack of supply. Let's bring in president and CEO of condo building company Tridel, Jim Ritchie. You know, as we hear all these different agencies and stakeholders talk about supply, you're a builder that could potentially alleviate some of those concerns. So we want to hear right from you, Jim, like what is the issue when it comes to supply? Well, you know, there's not a simple solution to supply. Um, there, there's a, a number a number of challenges. Um, for us, in as a, as a market builder in terms of market condo, you know, time to market has always been a challenge in terms of getting approvals, uh, working with um, a plethora of, of planning criteria and, and policies, the fees and the taxes that uh, erode affordability, and of course our, our most current interest rate environment uh, is is not contributing to you know being successful in this. But uh, that's you know just at a high level in terms of what of, of what we are challenged with uh, today uh, in in our industry. And yet you, know, you do well, build kind of in the on the back of that environment. So I want to get a sense of, you know, what you're building today versus what you think if you got some some reprieve on the time to get approvals um, or on some of the costs around dealing with those regulations, what you could be doing versus what you are doing. Right. Well, uh, thank you for that, Amber. First of all, I should point out you're quite correct. I mean, it's not that uh, our industry is, is uh, stopped in any form. Uh, we're building as an industry about 100,000 uh, condominium uh, suites throughout the GTA at, at this moment. And I think there's about another 20,000 purpose-built rentals also under construction. And bizarre as that sounds, we're still not meeting uh, the demand due to the uh, population increases, immigration, et cetera. Um, we're not what I would describe as affordable. It's really challenging in terms of affordability. Uh, so that that's that's one. And I think we're also focused uh, probably too much on very, very small suites that are easier to sell because of the lower lower price point uh, in, into the marketplace. And some of the concentrations of our market, um, such as you know the downtown core, need to be balanced with other opportunities. Um, the one thing about our condo market in the GTA, it's, in, in my mind, it's not one marketplace that's made up of of many submarkets uh, that have ever different needs. So uh, Scarborough is an example, I think, is an area where we're going to see more development. Uh, with new transit coming in, there's new opportunities uh, for the form of housing that, uh, that we, we specialize in, obviously, high rise and other areas throughout the GTA. We're seeing more uh, market share today in the 905, in particular uh, in, in Markham, in Vaughan, uh, in Mississauga, uh, even Oakville, but um, lots of opportunity in areas that that transit will support. Um, and I think Scarborough is another area that we, we should be looking at, at least in terms of affordability into the marketplace. One of the other uh, things that has been thrown out there is the fact that there's a lot of offices that are just sitting empty and might never go back to the way it was before the pandemic. Just rezone them, make them uh, residential. Is that easier said than done? <laughs> it is absolutely easier said than done. Uh, the the plate of an office building is not consistent with uh, a, a design that would work in, in, from a residential application. It's not impossible. Those are very uh, deep plates. Uh, so when you think about a, you know, a condominium suite and the relationship of the windows to the back of the home, um, it, it just doesn't lay out in, in, in the best circumstances. Not impossible because offices come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, but I don't think it is the panacea to resolve, you know, challenges uh, with office, not to mention, you know, policy and all the other good things that uh, have to be contemplated to do a conversion. Uh, but the plate itself isn't ideal. Are you seeing anything in terms of policies that are coming out there? There's a lot of political jockeying now at every level of government, uh, municipal election in Toronto for mayor. Have you seen anything concrete that might go some steps to addressing some of these issues? Well, clearly there's lots of ideas and the vast majority of that conversation is around affordable homes. And in the sense that uh, there is 
some kind of government intervention and money to help support um, you know, that, that, that built form. There's very little conversation around the type of work that we do. Um, you know, I think that our condominium product, I describe it as you know, being rel relative affordability in that when you look at it compared to other forms of housing, like it's, as an example, a single family house in Toronto, uh, I think on average last month sold for around $1.9 million and a condominium product was about 785000 so we have relative affordability in terms of the built one, but what we build doesn't necessarily suit everybody's lifestyle. Uh, thankfully, uh, you know, in the Toronto area, demographics support what we do. Um, there are more single people and couples without children or couples with small families that we can make a, cha you know, a transition from uh, a more expensive built form to something in economy and lifestyle that would work. So th that's one piece that... Affordability, you know, today, average condominiums sell for a million dollars. So that we, we are challenged from affordability from that perspective. But most of the conversation, getting back uh, to your point, uh, Amber, is about some form of housing that is supported with public money. And, 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 not, not and that would support, I guess, the, the supply side, which to your point, it seems like very complicated and takes years to deal with. So because because of that, we've gotten a lot of demand um, policies, right, meant to affect demand, various taxes. And I was speaking to an economist who's from Asia who mentioned that in Singapore, what they did was took more targeted demand policies. For example, on the land transfer tax, if you're a first time home buyer, it was, you know, low, 2%. If you're a second time home buyer, it's high, it's 40%. Or if you're a foreign home buyer, it's 60%. Effectively pricing out certain types of buyers, which, you know, we do have that foreign buyers uh, tax, but that doesn't seem super effective. Do you think those kind of more targeted, more nuanced demand measures could go a little bit further? I definitely think it's worth the conversation. I mean, Singapore, uh, you know, from a public housing perspective, has done um, many very good things. But if you want to use an example here, I, so I mentioned Scarborough as a, pot a potential area within the GTA that could see more development with uh, higher density housing. Why are the development charges the same cost in Scarborough as they are, say, in downtown Toronto? Or why is it, you know, a two or a three million dollar condominium have have that same DC left. Maybe there's ways that uh, we, we, you know, we could do it that would incent builders to work in areas that could create more affordability. And that, that's one example. Um, but I think a good one, and uh, that together with, you know, our biggest challenge in our industry, time to market and getting things approved, uh, would help.